Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of Stage 2 of Paris East 2021 from Enville, sur Monsieur to Amélie, 188 km stage, which the organisers ASO normally put in the race in the hope of crosswinds causing echelons. Would that happen today? There was a light wind forecasted, but it was from the right direction. You can see here there's obviously no climbs of note in the stage, but as I've told you three times at least now, this finish in the last 1600 meters was quite technical with a sharp right hander, then a 90 degree left hand turn, and then a 150 degree right hand turn with 450 meters to go. So, positioning would be crucial for sprint hopefuls like Sam Bennett, hoping to win his second stage in a row wearing the leader's jersey, as well as Mads Pedersen. A breakaway of two went up the road early, Sander Arme and Dries de Bont for Quebec Assos and Alpes and Phoenix, but they got brought back before I think the first intermediate sprint point and before the, when the wind started to pick up a little bit and Quickstep, Bora and Ineos and Jumbo Visma were all jostling for position at the front of the peloton. Now I think it was Trek Segafredo that tried to split it initially. And then Quickstep with 70 k's to go, tried again. Obviously, Quickstep, Trek, and Bora, the strong, and Ineos as well, are probably the strongest in crosswinds. And they weren't able to create massive gaps between each echelon. You can see Group 1 is bunched up at the front. So I think you can see here, this is one of the last echelons catching back up to the peloton. And the way they're riding suggests that there wasn't a particularly strong crosswind at that point. So a bit of crosswind teaser action, not any full-blown crosswinds. Going to the second intermediate sprint point, Michael Matthews once again trying to get all the intermediate sprints seconds available. He took at least five seconds on stage one in the intermediate sprints, those that finished at the end of a 400 meter, eight and a half percent climb. They were flat intermediate sprints today and he only came second and only took two seconds in this intermediate sprint because Andre Greipel I don't know why. Can someone let me know down in the comments below why Andre Geipel was going for the intermediate sprint? Is he going for GC that I don't know about in Paris Nice 2021? With no crosswind action, this was going to come down to a sprint. And that's where we fast forward to a 1,200 meters to go. Teich Benoit on the front for DSM Case Bowl, their sprinter for today. There was a crash in that left-hand turn with 1,100 meters to go. The middle circle on that overhead profile I showed you earlier. And when it zoomed in, we thought, oh no, is it Pascal Ackerman for Bora Hansgrohe? Because it kind of looked like him. But I think it was actually Jordi Mayus. Ackerman was still there in the sprint. And if we look at the overhead shot, it's Brian Cockar once again. He seems to be involving himself in a lot of these sketchy scenarios. And I think it's Jordi Mayus, the Bora rider, who gets his front wheel chopped by the DSM rider through that corner. He goes down. And this was way better work from DSM today, keeping Case Bowl at the front of the race. We obviously know that positioning is crucial going to that last right-hand corner. Bowl is third wheel right now. Benoit finishes his pull. And quick step are trying to move up Sam Bennett now on the right-hand side. 900 meters to go. They've still got Merku in front of Bennett behind this quick step rider. But there were problems for the quick step lead out today. And when they pan back to the overhead shot, you can see that that rider, who I think was trying to move up Merku and Bennett, was detached from them, who are far behind, behind John Degenkolb, I think 12th wheel. Case Bowl's in a good position, third wheel behind Niels Eckhoff and Soren Krah Anderson. Pedersen's in the green jersey, about to follow Jesper Sturven through the middle. And Brian Cockart again is going to swing pretty aggressively into Mads Pedersen and try and take Sturvin's wheel and Pedersen has to protect himself from going down. So Trek obviously knew that this corner was crucial but I do wonder whether they moved up too early and would have been better off having Sturvin behind the DSM lead out going into this corner. But 600 meters to go, we'll play it through in full speed. Ackerman about fourth wheel fighting for uh, Case Bowles wheel. Matthews on the outside of Cockard, he slots into fifth wheel. Brian Cockard third wheel, Mads Pedersen second in the green jersey. Sturvin begins his lead out proper with about 400 meters to go. And he did a fantastic job today, Sturvin, but he was just in a difficult position. And maybe that corner was just 50 to 75 meters too far away from the finish. And Case Bowl gets a run at Brian Cockard's wheel and then Sturvin slipstream and absolutely destroys everybody. Case Bowl's timing and initial burst today was outstanding. I don't think anyone else could have beaten him except maybe Bennett if he'd been in better position given how quickly Bennett hit the line at the end. Michael Matthews took third. That's going to be important for the yellow jersey conversation we're about to have. But let's go back to how the sprint played out in slow-mo. Just before that important last right-hand turn, you can see that Sturvin's moved up on the front with Pedersen, and that's a long way for Sturvin. 450 meters or so out of that corner. Bowl is second behind, I think, 
It's either Ekhov or Kra Anderson, his man, in front of him. Bowls fourth wheel. And then Ackerman is going to try and slip up and take his lead-out man's wheel through this corner. Pushes Bowl a bit narrower through the corner than he wanted to. But Bowl doesn't freak out. He actually slides or undercuts his own lead-out man and slots perfectly onto Brian Cockard's wheel. And he skipped all that mess. He's now in front of Ackerman and Michael Matthews. Bennett and Merku are way behind him. You see Merku's now trying to get a draft off the two DSM lead-up men, Ekhov and Cry Anderson, who are still trying to participate in this train. Now, I don't know whether this was a 5,000 IQ play from DSM Galaxy Brain type stuff or what it was, but the fact that Ekhov and Cry Anderson kept riding really hard in the middle of the train of sprinters despite Bowl being fourth wheel ahead of them so they weren't providing a direct draft benefit to him actually made a massive difference to Bennett and Merku not being able to move up because Merku tries to get their slipstream right now to move up I think uh, Kra Anderson's slipstream but he then dies at 300 meters to go and loses the wheel of John Degenkolb who's kicking so Bennett has to come out of the wheel of Merku with 300 meters to go eating the wind on his own the whole way. Ball then lays off Cockard's wheel a little bit and he's going to take a massive run at his wheel. Ackerman I think is sixth wheel and this was kind of like the Bennett sprint on stage one. Ball gets the draft of Cockard as he's getting up to speed and then Jasper Sturvin moves directly into his path when he finishes his lead out so Ball can accelerate into Sturvin's draft and then come out of it whereas Pedersen begins his sprint straight into the wind to the right hand side of Sturvin. Bennett who's been on his own in the wind for the last 75 meters already is coming from really deep and still hit the line really hard to come fifth and DSM got it right today they had issues yesterday and Bowl seems to have consistency issues that maybe his sprint lead out trains fault most of the time sometimes maybe his fault losing that train DSM have had a rough start to the season men and women's but they got it absolutely bang on yesterday masterclass lead out and sprinting performance from DSM and their Dutch sprinter Matthews coming third and Bennett coming fifth means Matthews took four bonus seconds and goes into the yellow jersey. Obviously, Matthews wanted to make me happier today after what happened with Richie Port yesterday. So he goes into yellow. Stage three, the ITT. A 14K loop starting and finishing in Gien. Not as hilly as previous Paranese ITT parkour. Only 102 meters elevation gain. Whereas it's been over 200 for a similar distance last year, which was won by Kra Anderson on Sunweb now DSM and Shuckman came second, six seconds behind him and he put 30 seconds plus into all his GC rivals. I can't wait to watch. If you want to watch it live, hear all the broadcasters by geography around the world. I'm sure your country is likely covered in this list. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did and we'll see you tomorrow with the Stage 3 highlights. Ciao.